Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my full review, the digitally digested segment, for the Asus Transformer Pad TF701. Now this is a 10.1 inch Android tablet running Jelly Bean 4.3, that's after an update out of the box, you'll likely have 4.22, 4.3 rolled out uh, not that long ago, but really did improve upon things like battery life, and tweaked several other uh, issues such as a brightness level uh, management problem that some users were experiencing. Some users are still reporting that but don't want to sidetrack too much. I'll get to that through the course of the review. And after all, since this is the digitally digested segment, I'm going to cover just about everything. So again, a 10.1 inch display, 2560 by 1600 resolution. This is an IPS display, the same technology used in the current iPad Air, which makes it a very compelling offering because at its $450 price point for a 32 gig build here, uh, no other options currently available. Originally, ASUS was going to offer a 64 gig variant. Uh, but the 32 gig version is definitely a value in my opinion and in my experience with competing products it is actually one of the better performers out there despite its value price point so a lot to be said just for the tablet version forget about whether or not you want to go the distance and actually turn this into the transformer that it truly is but this screen is in my opinion one of the best on the market the galaxy note 10.1 2014 of course Yet another fantastic display, that's a PLS display, different type of technology, same resolution count. And then the other one that this, or other tablet, that this will often be compared to is the Nexus 10, also manufactured by Samsung, like the Galaxy Note 10.1. Fairly old, uh, old compared to this tablet and the uh, Note, both of these relatively recent launches. And in my opinion, the Nexus 10 really shouldn't garner the comparison, but it will continue to because it is a Nexus device running a screen resolution, the same that we find here, which is the top of the line right now, uh, above and beyond, of course, the iPad Air's resolution. And they did, after all, start this pixel density war and somehow aren't leading it, which I expect will probably change in the next generation of iPad. But Again, focusing on what the transformer does deliver. So you're getting 32 gigs of internal storage. As I mentioned, a Tegra 4 quad-core processor that really is best in class, in my opinion, because it does offer not only great performance for every task you'd expect to accomplish on a tablet or even a computer, arguably, because uh, this is the same processor you're going to find in devices like NVIDIA Shield, uh, as well as the Microsoft Surface 2, a whole host of different Android tablets. Uh, from HP that are launching at the budget line. So NVIDIA really making sure that an incredible chip is available at a wide variety of different price points. So you aren't really paying for that incredible processor despite the fact that usually in the past we would be. In fact, NVIDIA making sure it's a very affordable processor and that's where ASUS has to do the rest in terms of convincing us that this tablet is worth the money. So 32 gigs of storage in my opinion is definitely a very good start because after all, we generally pay more for 32 gigs, at least at the base price point of any tablet offering that is a flagship top tier product like the uh, TF701. In terms of software, we also have a lot of enhancements that ASUS really isn't known for, even though they have uh, a pretty strong lineage now in the Android tablet market. So we see a little bit of a different uh, notification menu here. The settings menu also uh, completely different. Some will argue it looks a little bit uh, not very similar, but just the color contrast here, of course, which uh, can be customized a little bit to the uh, iPad, but really uh, nothing to compare here. Dual band Wi Fi, which, by the way, the Wi Fi performance is fantastic. This is something that uh, it's like part of the checklist that ASUS had compiled of all of the user feedback about what went wrong in previous generations, and I mean going back to the start and now coming full circle here to the TF701, they made sure to rectify all of those things. That doesn't mean we're looking at a perfect piece of hardware, but they really did focus. And it comes through on performance, and one area, again, is Wi-Fi. Uh, you can see right now it's showing 108 uh, megabit connection, and that's we are nowhere near my router. Uh, this is a Netgear 60, uh, R6300 AC capable uh, dual band router. This is the 5 gigahertz channel. Uh, I could switch over to the uh, 2.4, give you an idea of what speed looks like there. 
and you can see we dropped down to 58. So considerable difference, no question for all of, uh, those of you out there who wonder whether or not it's worth having the extra speed. Uh, it is. It comes through on performance. You'll see that when I start doing some web browsing. In terms of uh, sound enhancements, and I've covered all of this in previous videos, but this is the full review. Uh, they do a lot of things, uh, but this isn't a strong suit. Really, the transformer is about transforming, which makes sense. Uh, the two gigs of RAM that are on board here do complement the Tegra 4 well, but that's pretty much industry standard. They have made sure, though, in that 32 gigs of internal storage that there are no uh, I.O. issues like the previous generation, the TF700, which was a beautiful device, but was plagued by incredibly, or bottlenecked, uh, write capabilities on the I.O. side. So uh, basically, another thing rectified here, we have three times the speed of that previous generation. The processor also is almost roughly uh, twice the performance or twice the speed offered by the Tegra 3, even the overclocked version found in the last gen TF700. Uh, you can see notification controls, system sound controls. When it comes to display, you have brightness. Outdoor mode is something that has existed with Asus tablets for a while, and it's exactly what it sounds like. It's to enhance your viewing capability in bright sunlight. It basically just pumps up what is already one of the brightest and highest uh, pixel or you know pixel dense displays on the market. Because remember, this is a 10.1 inch display with a 2560 by 1600 resolution panel. That's higher res than most high end 27 inch uh, computer monitors. So really a lot going into uh, producing, in my opinion, a very great uh, or solid offering with this display, especially since I've had no dead pixels or backlight bleed, which I featured in previous videos because, again, that doesn't ring true with at least the previous generation. So Asus maturing, and that comes through on the fact that now we've got, at least in my opinion, far better quality control with regard to the actual screen, which is inherently one of the most important features of any tablet, especially in this uh, category, the 10.1 inch, I'll say golden category, that is pretty much the rule, and that includes the iPad at 9.7. Uh, everything else below, I would consider sub 10 inch. And that's the defining difference between tablet and moving to something more like a hybrid ultrabook or computer, which is what the transformer really does try to do. Now, in terms of display, beyond the uh, outdoor mode, you can turn off your auto rotation, you can control your sleep time, uh, daydream, your font size, screen sharing. Uh, you also have the wireless display mode, Miracast, so basically... Uh, you know, you are able to wirelessly stream Asus Promises or it's really NVIDIA up to 4K output, uh, also over HDMI. Those days aren't here right now, but wishful thinking for right now. At least we know the capability is built in somewhat of uh, future proofing, but until it's tangible, I can't really say with any complete confidence that we're going to see that anytime soon. Of course, software updates are where that functionality really lies. Uh, home screen wall, uh, wallpaper as well as lock screen. Uh, everything that's standard, uh, jelly bean stuff, the storage capacity, I've mentioned this before, I've left this tablet relatively stocked through the course of my usage for review purposes when I come back to video because I tend to uh, do a wipe because I want you to see what the tablet looks like out of the box, how it will actually perform out of the box. And as you can see, you've got 23 gigs, uh, almost 24 available out of the 25.27 that are there of the 32 gigs after the operating system at least has taken up its portion of the available uh, internal storage. Uh, remember, you do have a micro SD card slot for storage expansion. I'll be taking you around the body uh, towards the end of the review when I discuss build quality, and that's where you'll see pretty much everything the tablet has to offer and where all the action is. I'll also talk about uh, ergonomics and the uh, button function because that's still relevant. You know, everything about a tablet comes down to the experience, and all those little cues, all those little details really do matter. In terms of battery, well, I'm fully charged for this review, but what I can tell you is that the battery life has been stellar. Uh, this tablet, much like its predecessors, easily gives at least 10 hours. You could get up to 12, possibly, depending on what you do with screen brightness, uh, whether you allow uh, the smart saving feature to be on or not. Uh, those are all things that are going to be relevant in terms of de uh, developing a ideal, I would say, uh, battery life configuration for your actual day-to-day -day use, similar to what you would do with a Windows machine. And that's what's so cool about the Transformer lineup. Asus, after all, is a manufacturer in the PC business as well. And that carries over all of their logic, all of their uh, clear concepts that relate to productivity and usefulness. 
do come through in their Android offerings as well, at least especially here in this far more polished version of the Transformer, and it should be. It's the latest one. And now that the brand is expanding to Windows uh, and dual boot uh, capability, it's something where the TF701 does really need to shine, and fortunately enough, it does. Now, if you pair this with the optional keyboard, which runs an additional $130 to $150, depending on the retailer, but keep in mind, uh, be war uh, warned right now, uh, Asus is refreshing those, to my knowledge, because a very large uh, portion of them are defective, and the actual docking uh, connecting port has too much give. It just doesn't keep the tablet seated, therefore the connection is loose. Not only does it not maintain the connection, but it also risks damaging uh, the connection on the dock as well as the connection on your tablet. So uh, if you do have a keyboard dock and have been having problems, reach out to Asus, do something about it. Don't sit on it uh, because you'll end up with something that you may or ne may or may not get help with in the long run, and that would be really unfortunate considering this is a great device, but they did have, uh, unfortunately, at least one tremendous oversight in the launch. The tablet itself, though, is relatively flawless, as you'll see as I continue to go through this review. So incredible battery life. Uh, charging time also, not that bad. Three to four hours, depending on where you're at, to get a full charge. That's pretty good, considering that this tablet is going to give you battery life that's top of the mark, especially for a 2560 by 1600 re uh, resolution battery hog of an IPS display. But credit the a Tegra 4 quad-core processor, that A15 architecture, and their low-power cores for really offsetting something that the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 uh, looks to an A7 quad-core secondary chip uh, to manage rather than a solution like the Tegra 4, which has those additional uh, or the additional core to handle that. Uh, in terms of app control, nothing really to show you there. Uh, uh, multiple users, that is an available option here so if you want to create accounts you can power management as i demoed before power saver power consumption table uh, will also uh, bring up exactly what you are expecting your consumption for every single component of android at least that's running on your tablet uh, the customized settings screenshot capabilities the file format that it'll be saved in uh, your battery saving uh, settings for when you're using the mobile dock if you want to disable the wake up function when you open uh, the keyboard which and close it, which I think is obviously part of the beauty. It acts like a laptop. Why would you want to disable that? Uh, also, uh, you've got the interface settings, the Asus uh, quick settings, which will uh, switch between Android and the quick settings notification panels. And finally, the system bar lock. Access to location, security, not a lot to show there, the lock screen, and you can put, as you may have noticed, shortcuts on that lock screen, which I'll be showing in a moment, and you can customize all of those. So a nice little element. It's part of the multitasking theme of the Transformer. They don't want you to get lost, they being Asus, in the Transformer uh, concept. If you want it, great, but it's still a fantastic tablet. That's why I did a video just about the tablet on its own. Is it worth buying it? Uh, sans the keyboard, even though it extends battery life, gives you uh, almost a full-size keyboard trackpad with semi-multi-touch capability for scrolling at least, not pinch to zoom. And in addition to that, a full-size USB, uh, USB 3.0 port and SD card slot. So really just expanding your functionality, flexibility, capability of what something that's mobile can do. Uh, something that we really can't expect from any other device that runs a Tegra 4 uh, quad-core processor, including the Surface 2, which many like to think is more of a business end machine a better balance than what Android or iOS can deliver. Clearly a better comparison because it does have the same processor. But in my opinion, when this is docked, even though Microsoft has its keyboards, uh, the the really rich library of applications and what ASUS has done here with software makes this the better choice if I was going to have to try to choose between those two. Uh, but many of you probably aren't on the fence trying to make that decision because you've arrived at the TF701 uh, because you've used it in the past, or really just like the price point and all of the features, which really are best in class. Uh, as far as language input, nothing really to show there, even though I was just uh, going over features that were uh, completely irrelevant to that. Uh, backup and reset, self-explanatory, your account control and adding ca you know different Google accounts, uh, email clients, uh, your date and time, your accessibility, about, 
and I'll jump into that. You can see we are on 4.3. I mentioned some enhancements. They've changed some fonts. They've um, basically just addressed issues that were known. I mean, they can't fix the docking issue with software. Uh, initial hopes when this tablet first launched were that that was something that was going to be able to be addressed through software. But as I've documented over and over again in different videos, you can see the play in the hinge. It's not a software problem. So at least good news that Asus is acknowledging it and moving forward. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, hold off on picking up the keyboard dock uh, unless you get very, very lucky and get a brand new build because I think a lot of the inventory out there that hasn't been pulled back is still defective. Uh, and I don't want any of you you know, listening to the review about what a great product this is to then be disappointed or let down by the fact that that manufacturing defect hasn't been corrected by ASUS or their vendors carrying their products. Um, but again, 450 buys you a lot here. Bluetooth, I mentioned Wi-Fi performance. The Bluetooth also I had no problems. You want to pair up a uh, Bluetooth gaming controller, headset, uh, headphones, you're good to go. Uh, the front-facing camera performs uh, pretty well, better than any middle-of-the-road tablet. Does it exceed uh, the Galaxy Note 10.1 2014? No, uh, the quality there is superior, but Samsung is in the, or slowly, trying to really make a, pos a position for themselves in digital imaging. They have been for a while, I shouldn't say slowly. Whereas Asus, that's foreign territory. They really only do it uh, here in uh, their tablet lineup. So you can't really expect a whole lot, but they did do a lot in the way of software, which I'll be showing. But let's get out of the settings. I, men I mentioned before being able to customize some things here with software, and this is one of them. You know, to get to Google Now, you can long press home and launch it as I move the whole tablet there. Uh, and you can see that's an easy way to get to Google Now. But part of what ASUS has built in here is your ability to quickly get uh, into things like uh, s basically creating shortcuts, customizing shortcuts, up to eight of them, uh, whether we want to go to the web browser, picture gallery, uh, Super Note, which is their note-taking uh, application uh, to complement uh, the keyboard experience and just overall productivity for this tablet because they want to directly compete with something like the Galaxy Note and clearly maintain that they are the more ASUS, the more productive, app, uh, driven device than even the Note with its S Pen uh, capability. And good argument is definitely there because uh, when you look at how powerful this machine is, uh, as well as the Note could ever perform, this gives you another dimension of computing that's just not available with that device, uh, with or without optional accessories. Uh, and of course things like calendar. So that's customizable. Then you can get to voice search, uh, your system bar lock. Uh, so really nice things, your launcher, and it just works. Uh, this overlay also customized here. You can see we've got um, something that looks stock, but then when it comes to uh, the other little cues and organization, uh, it is ASUS's own uh, experience. If I turn off the screen, bring it back on. You can see that custom launcher before that I was talking about, and you can customize uh, any of these widgets that you prefer to have uh, running or quick launchable here. And they will just remain uh, basically pinned when you launch them, at least in this manner, which is yet another uh, piece of polish that's been added to the software suite. Uh, essentially, another multitasking aimed feature. If we want something like a calculator, you've got it. And you can actually drag it to the position you prefer. If we want audio settings, or at least I thought you could, but it's easily uh, you know, moved pro uh, post, uh, dictionary. And you can really go to your heart's content here, brought up the keyboard accidentally, uh, the video player. And this isn't gonna slow down. That's the whole point. Even with two gigs of RAM, yes, you've got three gigs on uh, the Galaxy Note 10.1 2014. This tablet just is a multitasking beast. And anything with a quad-core chip like the Tegra 4 uh, or the Exynos 5 or the Snapdragon 800, anything in that A15 ARM architecture, you really should expect very similar performance. It all comes down to how well uh, each respective uh, designer, the uh, manufacturers, NVIDIA in this case, a fabulous one, how well do they actually tweak the performance and 
put their own spin on that A15 design. And this is a gaming chip at its core. Uh, if you decide uh, to use the Tegra Zone, uh, let me go ahead and close some of these out. Things will get a little bit cluttered, even though you have 10.1 inches of real estate. And there's that quick access to the Audio Wizard, which is really nice to have uh, to switch in and out of uh, modes. The sad part is, is that the audio itself is lackluster. You're looking at a single speaker uh, on the back of the unit that leaves a lot to be desired. You can see it right there. It's loud, but just not as robust as a lot of competing products, whether I'm talking about the current uh, Galaxy Note uh, 2014 or even something like the Tegra Note 7. The speakers on that outperform the speakers you're getting here in this $450 device. I'm not comparing 7-inch to 10-inch tablets, but at least on audio performance, I just did. The same applies to the Yoga 8. That's another uh, sub 10 inch tablet that will basically kill this when it comes to audio performance. But good to see that they're trying to give us some other options when it comes to software. That's not something Asus has been really known for. Uh, Polaris Office is another thing included. Uh, and really just everything else that's installed, whether it's Zombie Driver, Dead Trigger, those are things I've uh, thrown on here for demo purposes. Uh, but all the Google applications. Now, Tegra Zone, that's where you get to really leverage uh, the entire uh, NVIDIA Tegra-capable gaming store. It's not opening for some... Oh, it decided to work there. And basically, you're going to get access to games that are optimized with THD uh, enhancements so that chips like the Tegra 4 will be able to give you a different experience than you're going to get on any other device that's driven by a processor that isn't a Tegra 4. Uh, that is the uh, push for it. After all, this is the same chip you're going to find in the Shield, which is uh, NVIDIA's very own gaming uh, Android console, portable console, that's also capable of turning into a console hooked up to your TV, streaming gaming. I mean, just an incredible device that I've already reviewed and think is an innovative and, quite frankly, one of the best gadgets uh, that has come out this year, love it or hate it, nothing else like it ever made. Here in the Transformer, you do have all of that power, uh, 2 gigs of RAM, that's quality RAM, again, 32 gigs of quality internal storage, uh, micro HDMI out for video out, so if you want to play these games on your big screen with a controller, you can. Uh, because of the micro USB, which you cannot charge through, you will need to charge uh, through that proprietary port that's also used for docking with the keyboard, which is probably one of the few drawbacks of the tablet, but not really a drawback. It's Part of the design always has been. Uh, would I like the capability to charge through the micro USB port? Of course, uh, but it's not a big letdown. The fact remained, remains that that can be used for file transfer and uh, USB host, which means hooking up uh, you know, hard drives to your heart's content, jump drives, SD card readers, uh, peripherals like a keyboard, a mouse if you don't want to use Bluetooth. Uh, these are all great options that pretty much every tablet has, unless it's Nexus, they try to limit some of those features. Uh, but ASUS does it right. It all works out of the box. This is one of the first times I can say that about ASUS. Really, nothing on the TF701 to nitpick about. I mean, that maybe the single speaker, but beyond that, the cameras are upgraded, the processor is upgraded, the RAM is improved, the internal storage is three times the speed, uh, the screen best in class now, arguably right up there with the Note uh, 2014, because it's really a matter, I think, of personal preference. The the color gamut, accuracy, and just how it displays things. You could put them side by side. One person will prefer this one, another the uh, the Note. So you can argue they're kind of a draw there on the uh, screen quality, even though I personally think the Note does edge this one out slightly for that pop and just the wow factor. Others will call that um, oversaturation. So a matter of personal preference. Uh, but in terms of battery life, also, that's another place they've kept it in line. Even though the battery got smaller in this tablet, we still are getting well over 10, maybe even 12 hours, depending on uh, what you do with settings. I'm not saying for high-end gaming you're going to get that, but for uh, general productivity, web browsing, email, the things that you would do on any tablet, whether or not it was a gaming beast like this uh, with an incredibly high-res screen or not. Tegra Zone's a good uh, app. And the reason I did bring it up, besides the fact that it's enhanced, is that it's growing rapidly. I know this from my Shield coverage. It started out with a little over 20 games, and the library is starting to get huge, quite frankly. And now, because you can map uh, buttons 
again, this is a tangent on the shield, um, expect even more Tegra optimized games to be launched. That's really the point. So even though this isn't a shield, because you've got that uh, Tegra 4 quad core chip, you're going to see even more games. This is going to become a true gaming console in the 10.1 inch form factor. Uh, beyond that, Zinio, uh, Asus's own bloatware is exactly that, really, for the most part. What I've shown you is the good stuff. Uh, the rest of it, you could argue, most of us can live without. Uh, but overall, there isn't a ton of it. You saw it pretty good on the available space, uh, so I can't really complain. They offer some web storage, uh, their own weather app. Uh, but not a lot to speak of otherwise here in terms of their applications. Uh, the, the real big feature was really the customization on the uh, little micro launcher. And then, of course, again, uh, the other being the quick launcher for multitasking, which you can customize. I didn't note that before. You can add other tasks here. It's a pretty big miss on my behalf, but at least I'm remembering so that those of you don't uh, have to comment and remind me. Uh, and also, those of you curious know that is another possibility. So multitasking really not overlooked on this tablet at all, and it shouldn't be. This is arguably one of the most productive tablets on the market. I don't care what operating system you prefer. Uh, it's tough to beat this. This is as close to getting a Windows machine as you possibly could in a tablet form. And by Windows machine, I don't mean the look and feel, I mean the capability. So even though you're not going to be able to do video editing, you know, run a website, at least in terms of coding or creating software on something like this where you would require a desktop PC, uh, you can get pretty close. Uh, and when it comes to email, uh, web browsing, uh, multimedia, content consumption, gaming, uh, this thing will just tear everything up and will benchmark with the best of them, if not better than most of the competition. So really a lot to like here. They even do have an actual little video editing app, but I would never recommend that. Uh, the camera software is definitely an improvement, but it doesn't, it's not a game changer. Let me put it at that. Uh, I demoed it briefly in previous videos, and you can see that we've got uh, turbo, which will give you uh, rapid successive shots. Uh, so that's your continuous mode, which is functional. Uh, you can see right now, if I bring something like uh, the Tegra Note 7, I'll flip it over because there's nothing to focus on otherwise, which is right now one of my favorite 7-inch uh, tablets on the market because it's incredibly powerful. Touch to focus, a little too close, bring it back a bit here. See if I can turn off the uh, the light. It's not helping us with matters. That'll help a little bit. And so struggling, but then if I hit turbo, we should be getting successive. Yeah. So you can see we got a total of six shots taken, and then you can basically select which is your personal favorite top five select all. I can go ahead and delete them. I mean, share it. You can do whatever you want. Now, video capture, this button right here, and you're now recording. Uh, I believe I have this set to 1080p, but I'm going to check that in settings right now. Let's stop the recording. You can also control the focus point there, as you may have noticed. Uh, if I go over to the left, you'll see the uh, settings are all right here. And one of the things I will note is that as much as I like to see all of these controls, and a lot of manufacturers are doing this now, it's kind of a joke. I mean, let's face it, we're dealing with an 8 megapixel camera on the back here that at its best is comparable to cell phone, you know, smartphone quality uh, cameras, which leave a lot to be desired if you actually care about your images. If you're just looking to have a camera because you wouldn't buy one otherwise, then it's certainly serviceable and I think will satisfy you. But if you actually have standards when it comes to imaging and want a, a great looking shot, you're never going to find it on any tablet. And until the day comes that a tablet manufacturer is really market uh, great camera quality, don't expect it. So the, when I see, you know, white balance and ISO control and exposure compensation and all these features, it's great to see as a uh, photography enthusiast uh, and someone who actively is reviewing cameras. But the reality is, is that it's a lot more writing and, and what hopes to be practical software than really, um, in my opinion, valuable in real world use. So hopefully that makes sense for most of you, but better to have it than not. And there's quite a bit here if you haven't noticed. Uh, and I'm not taking anything away from ASUS. This is a comment you're going to hear me make 
about a lot of tablets in the future because this is something all of the manufacturers have begun to do to become far more competitive in their camera mode uh, capabilities. So let's get the Tegra Note 7 out of there. Of course, front-facing camera is there as well. My ceiling. Let's get back to the home page. Home screen, I should say. And uh, these docked uh, applications, also customizable, of course. A long touch on screen uh, is going to basically give you quick access to just wallpaper, your gallery, uh, just so that you can actually choose your wallpaper. Very much what you'd expect in Jelly Bean. So this is really as stock an experience as you're going to get outside of Nexus. And it should be, after all, Asus makes the Nexus 7 uh, the NVIDIA quad-core chip in there is based around a partnership that also used to be uh, the foundation for the Nexus, uh, at least, I won't say the entire program, but the first Nexus 7, uh, the Zoom, which even though it wasn't dubbed a Nexus 10-inch tablet, of course, was the first uh, Google-powered 10-inch tablet that was based around the Tegra 2. So a long lineage there, a long relationship. And it pays off because everything is optimized. Everything works incredibly well. When it comes to web browsing, this is basically one of the best experiences you're going to get. And that has to do with both uh, the dual band Wi-Fi that I mentioned at the beginning of the review. Uh, also, of course, just the balance of the hardware. We're getting something that's just, just below. You know, we're getting so close to uh, desktop, or I should say ultrabook performance. And that's why all of these brand new Windows 8.1 tablets uh, are so competitively priced to undercut uh, Android offerings because they arguably can do a lot more. They are full-blown computers, even though in some instances their chips aren't necessarily more powerful than the A15 uh, Tegra 4 you're getting here. So Bay Trail is a strong offering and something that I think a lot of you are going to consider when looking at something like this. Uh, but you're not going to find a Bay Trail system with a 2560 by 1600 resolution display. And this form factor... Uh, this price point. So there, I'm not going to really go too far into that comparison, but it is something that's going to run through a lot of your minds when you're looking for a productivity clamshell transformer like we're looking at here. Uh, the stock keyboard is fairly nice, very, uh, very similar or comparable to Samsung's keyboard, you know, integrating everything you're going to need access to pretty much in one place. Uh, no problem using it. I'm going to go ahead and do some web browsing. And you'll see the performance is solid. Unfortunately, so are advertisements. Pinch to zoom, no problems. I've demoed this before, and it really goes without saying that any device with the Tegra 4 processor, as long as it's paired with decent Wi-Fi, is going to scream. And you saw my connection before in terms of uh, the actual speed and strength. I like that we got a desktop by default. I mentioned this in previous uh, previous videos. I also like that when I zoom in, uh, that ASUS auto reformats the text. This is something that I wish more manufacturers would do. They realize your point of interest based on your point of zooming. So that's another good thing that they include. Uh, and basically, just performance is great. There's nothing to complain about here. And you can open up as many tabs as you like, run as many programs as you like, you're just not going to hit the wall with this tablet. And it, I've already compared it to the Note uh, 2014, the Note 10 2014, and it's really close. It really just comes down to, do you want the clamshell or do you want the S Pen? And I think some people want just a tablet, which by the way, I've already made a video in a case for purchasing this uh, as just a tablet and it being one of the best on the market in its own right. But in the event that you do want to take advantage of its namesake and turn it into the transformer, that's where, clearly, comparing it to the Galaxy Note 10, it's all about whether or not you want keyboard or pen input. And that's not to say with the Note you can't use a keyboard. Of course you can, either using USB host or uh, Bluetooth. But when it comes to an integrated solution, battery life, that full-size USB port that is 3.0, an upgrade from the previous gen that was 2.0, and also that full-size SD card slot, this really is just, again, um, yes, an evolutionary device, but still revolutionary in that there's nothing else like it on the market. So a lot of credit goes to Asus for continuing to improve upon a great product and really solve 
almost every single problem or complaint that you could have had about previous generations. And I've combed forums left and right, uh, colleagues, no one really has come up with anything other than, as I mentioned before, the docking issue, which is a big one. I won't discount it in any way, and I think my coverage reflects that, uh, as well as uh, the light screen flickering issue. Um, I haven't seen some of uh, mentioned dust under the screen, none for me. And I have to say, that's a fairly common thing. I'm not a fan of it. It bothers me. It's something I wouldn't expect on a $450 tablet or my $2,000 uh, Duo 13, but it happens. Uh, even in the cleanest, uh, you know, white rooms, the clean rooms where they fab a lot of this hardware, it still happens. And uh, my Duo 13 does have a speck of dust underneath it. Do I think it speaks to poor quality control in Japan? No. Do I think it shouldn't be there? Absolutely. Uh, but when it came to overall QC here, some best-in-class performance when it comes to ASUS and their track record. And that speaks to all of their products. I'm not saying they're a, a bad manufacturer, but they are a value one. And part of that value, it seems like I'm advertising for Tom Hanks in this uh, Disney movie that's scary. But what I'm really pointing to is that ASUS did a great job in turning around QC outside of the dock. Uh, the dimming issue I haven't had where it's alternating even when the smart... Uh, feature is off the smart save. Some people toggle on and off to fix the, uh, you know, LED backlight brightness adjustment mind of its own feature from happening. It corrects it. I haven't had it. And you'll see that through the course of the video. If you notice at any point and I've missed it that the brightness is going on and off, changing levels, let me know. Uh, it's supposed to vary from application to application. That's part of the smart stay feature. It's trying to understand what you're doing. That's why they also have things like the reading mode. And this is another thing Samsung's done where they give you a quick access to all different settings, whether we're talking about reading mode, the instant dictionary, Bluetooth, GPS, um, silent mode, which I have it on now, not to interrupt anything, airplane, airplane mode, or auto sync. So they have everything there, uh, quick access. The GPS, by the way, has worked really well. Uh, I am interested to see eventually what KitKat looks like on here. It should only make things even better because KitKat brings enhanced performance to lower end or lower powered or spec devices. So uh, I can only expect even better performance uh, from something like this. And that's always usually the goal for Google. Every update is to try to give you better performance across the board uh, so that you don't need a beast like we're looking at here. But if you happen to have it, you're going to benefit infinitely. Um, so overall, really like everything about this tablet, if that hasn't become increasingly clear through the course of the review. And all these little quick access uh, features in the notification, that's your added value that just doesn't exist with many other manufacturers other than Samsung, at least not in a usable form. And I'll say that because tablets like the Yoga 8, which I like a lot, the software, the skin overlay there is just horrid. So some manufacturers get it right. Some people love TouchWiz. Some people hate it. There's no question I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with it because Samsung puts together some great equipment but then that touch whiz really does bring it down or at least hold it back in many ways. So that's a, a big uh, you know, compromise in that regard. Here we don't have that compromise, which is really refreshing and one of the reasons I like the Transformer TF701 so much and all of the past Transformers for the most part. Uh, but they were plagued with QC that, again, isn't here. So uh, like what they've done here, a great performing tablet. We've gone down to 89%. The video is at roughly we're getting close to 39 minutes so we'll round it up to 40 minutes uh, brightness all the way up and we are in the outdoor mode which you can control right there another quick setting uh, which is again just a great thing to have quick access to so keep that in mind uh, for those of you that have been watching the battery meter and are going to tell me all about how we did a, a 10 or 11 percent drop in x amount of minutes be reminded we were uh, running this at full res uh, last but not least a little bit of video performance wouldn't hurt. Uh, I could also pull up gaming, but I have a separate demo up for that. And this thing, as I mentioned, just destroys anything you're going to throw at it when it comes to gaming. I'm going to bring up YouTube. And let's see what I've got. Let's bring up a little video test to keep uh, all the content gods happy. So now I just wanted to do a audio and video test. We'll start off with a video sample. Really show off that display. And 
you'll notice that even when we're tight like this, no pixelation, I'll go in even tighter. The display is fantastic. There's nothing else to be said for it. Without a doubt, one of the best displays on any device in the market. Now, as far as audio goes, let's go ahead and jump back and I will give you a completely different video. Let's try XPS unboxing the XPS 18, which a fairly popular uh, video because it is a fairly unique device. I'm going to bring the microphone over. sense it is if you want to compare it to something like the first generation Surface Pro because it is running a Ivy Bridge Core i5 processor complemented by 8 gigs of RAM, a 500 gig hard drive that does have a hybrid 32 gig SSD for booting and really does resemble again a giant Surface Pro. And if that didn't demonstrate the audio, here's the speaker going right here, the speaker, straight to the microphone. I'll bring it around, in fact. Uh, again, as I mentioned, a Core i5-337U processor. Uh, Dell is still not making this with Haswell yet, but I expect a refresh uh, very soon. So also a good opportunity if you don't care about And there you have it. So that should give you a pretty good idea on the audio. Uh, I mean, I first tried bringing the microphone over, a less than ideal solution, but bringing the tablet to the mic really should have delivered the best uh, audio performance test at least I can afford all of you that are watching this video so audio quality despite being a single speaker which is a little bit of a letdown on a high quality device like this still very good and um, again it comes down to how much will you really be using the speaker I don't want to liken it to the cameras I mean the front facing camera completely serviceable for video conferencing the rear okay for stills how much will I be using the rear probably not a lot the front facing certainly more it's much more practical the speakers I feel like almost on every tablet every user could justify away by saying well I'm gonna use headphones but I don't think any of us really want bad speakers. So even though these are loud, they aren't best in class. The Galaxy Note 10.1 2014, a little bit better in that department. But overall, uh, not a letdown. Keep in mind, this has some of the best build quality, and that's where I'm going to uh, leave things off here to close out the review. When it comes to build quality on this device, because I already covered gaming, I said if you you know pretty much are interested in that, take a look at the gaming uh, demo that I already uh, put up recently. You can see on the right side, we have a pinhole right there, which is a microphone, one of several, I believe, for noise canceling capability for your video conferencing needs. Uh, nothing else on the right side. Very clean, metallic build here. One of the most solid tablets uh, that you're going to find in the market. And in the center, we've got our charging port, which is proprietary. One of my least favorite things about this tablet, but also completely necessary for the mobile dock that I've reviewed which unfortunately again is defective in most instances so a necessary evil but one that is well worth having um, the th ports surrounding it are basically the lock mechanisms for when this is connected to the keyboard dock uh, on the other side the left side of the tablet we have our uh, micro well start off with the three and a half millimeter uh, headphone jack right there uh, to the left of that, we have our micro HDMI out, uh, and that's going to allow you, of course, to output 1080p video content. I believe that's it. Uh, and then we have our micro SD card slot. So that pretty much rounds out uh, port selection there. And uh, in terms of other noteworthy things, uh, I had mentioned before uh, micro USB. Uh, correction on that uh, again this is something where you're going to have to buy an adapter ASUS will sell this 
uh, and that is what's going to allow you to use host. The only way you're going to actually be able to natively have USB host with this device uh, without an adapter is through buying the keyboard uh, mobile dock, which since right now it's defunct, uh, is a bit of an issue. You can use an adapter to the cable that's included for charging, uh, which may or may not work. I haven't used that myself because I have only used the keyboard dock, uh, but I have no doubt that ASUS has the drivers uh, for everything to work with this. Uh, so that's one area where uh, I do miss having a uh, micro uh, USB port on here, uh, which I misspoke about earlier in the video. So. Uh, that's another area of contention, but minor, especially if you are really out to get the entire Transformer experience, which I think the majority of users that are going to buy this, they really are after that. And when it comes to the volume rocker and power button, uh, overall, no mispresses, uh, no accidental touches, so performance really good for both of those, which is... Uh, again, a mild redesign here, but very similar to the TF700. Everything on here in terms of design is very similar, except for all of the problems, as I keep mentioning. Uh, you have an LED, very subtle there, for uh, charging notification as well as general, uh, general notification purposes. Uh, so that'll blink, uh, change colors to let you know what's going on. No flash. Do I care? No, not really, because again, uh, the camera isn't even a secondary feature, in my opinion, on tablets. It's just one that uh, manufacturers are including so that con consumers will not complain that their tablet is missing a rear camera. Uh, but build quality, this is one of the best in class, one of the least uh, fingerprint prone, and uh, stays clean relatively well, easy to keep clean. Uh, yes, you don't have weather sealing like uh, Sony's tablets, uh, but then again, no other manufacturers really do. So this is really all about the processor, the screen quality, and just an overall experience that out of the box screams. And the fact that ASUS has already been very aggressive in updating the software means you have a tablet that they're probably going to want to continue to support uh, through the course of its existence. Uh, in a year from now, when they launch their new transformer, will this likely start to fade in terms of software support? Of course. After all, that is the premise with almost all uh, devices like this. That's the way manufacturers continue to put out new products. Uh, but as far as it stands right now in the current climate and uh, you know different manufacturers, what they're offering, the ASUS TF701, this latest transformer pad, uh, not only delivers one of the best standalone tablet experiences uh, in terms of performance and battery life and screen quality and overall flexibility, but then that keyboard really just takes it to a whole nother level by getting you up to uh, I would say in my experience around 14 to 15 hours depending on usage and then because you have a full-size SD card slot and full-size USB 3.0 port that's where you're in peripheral and at least photographer heaven and storage heaven if you need another 64 or even 128 gig uh, SD card pop it in there and you're good to go. Uh, in terms of 128 gig, I haven't tested it, but I've read that it is functional. If you know otherwise, please feel free to post that in the comments for users so that nobody uh, goes out there to purchase that card. Uh, I'm not trying to mislead anyone, but that's what I have uh, seen from other users. Uh, beyond that, overall, you're just looking at a beast. Asus doing what they do best. The Transformer line is their flagship, and the TF701 does not disappoint. Everything out of the box works. Software support is there, hardware is phenomenal, and really, the only thing that I think users are still going to complain about, and that's only some, is the bezel. And in my opinion, the bezel is fine. It gives you somewhere to hold. Uh, tablets that have become borderless certainly look nicer. Uh, the glass-to-glass -glass look is great, uh, but in reality, the practical use, ergonomics, uh, it's hard to not really, you know, have somewhere to hold on to a tablet. Uh, would I have liked to have had uh, the on-screen buttons be hardware buttons? Yes and no. I mean, this is the standard now. No one really expects physical buttons anymore, and certainly I think more users would rather have the on-screen buttons, but I personally still would rather have uh, the actual screen real estate not eaten into. But again, that's nitpicking, a minor uh, point that I just wanted to make in closing, and something that really can be rectified with third-party applications, launchers. I mean, you can customize as much as you want here. This is already rooted, and you can maintain root uh, even under Jelly Bean. I will put a link uh, about rooting this device uh, over, or rather in the description, to XDA 
uh, because there is a tutorial there guide uh, that's fairly simple and for those of you who know what you're doing you'll have absolutely no problem getting this device rooted and taking full administrative uh, privilege control over the TF701. Hopefully this review covered just about everything you could possibly want to know about this tablet. Uh, if not, please feel free to post questions. Uh, but in my opinion, this is absolutely worth every penny of the 450 or maybe even less that you can find it for right now because it is uh, in tight supply because of all of the issues with the quality control of the dock. I'm not saying it's been recalled, but stores hesitant to roll it out until things get rectified. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Look.